We are here for Spartan Up Podcast, and we are talking Lonnie Main. Lonnie Main created this thing called Red Shoes Living, and his dad was a pro wrestler. Moondog. Moondog Main. I didn't know him. Um, who wore red shoes? Red boots. Red boots. Do you know the, the wrestling boots? Big guy. Well, he's a pro wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> and, but, but he took a bunch of things from that wrestling experience with the dad, and has turned them into life lessons. And we're going to dive in. It's so good that we hired him at Spartan. That's Before good. we get yeah. into that, yeah. we got Joe DeSena. That's who I am, founder and CEO of Spartan. We got Seth for the Seed Huntress. We got Colonel Nye. And then we got a guest today. My guest. Command Sergeant Major, retired Command Sergeant Major Frank Grippy. Thank you, Joe. He's tough as nails. And we got Miss Marion, our producer and director, as always behind the camera. and Who I always forget, and it's starting to look like I do it on purpose, because <clears> that's <throat> not the reason. And Johnny Waits in Asia. Johnny Waits in Asia. But we're going to talk Spartan. about resiliency because that's what we do here. We always dive into resiliency. We are your resiliency accountability partner. Mm -hmm. We come out every day with something. On Tuesdays, we do interviews like this. But every other day, we're ripping you out of your bed, shaking you up. Free and make, resiliency audits. And making you work hard. And if that doesn't work, we got Frank here. I'll come to your house. Help you set some goals. You're going to love this interview. <laughs> and then at the end, we're going to wrap it up. Yeah. We're going to review the points. And Ask you can tell you a us question. if you didn't love the interview. Exactly. But this is going to be awesome. <laughs> this episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by HealthFit. Unlock your potential with a simple DNA swab and discover a whole world of personalized diet and fitness insights. Go to dnafit.com slash Spartan right now and receive a 20% discount. All right, we are here with Lonnie Main, and we are talking about Red Shoe Living. Right. The heck is Red Shoe Living? Red Shoe's Living, it's, uh, well, it's got to give you a little history. My father was a professional wrestler, and uh, Moondog Main was his name. He died when I was 10 years old. But when I was uh, a boy and my mother would let me go to the wrestling matches with him, sometimes that was in Madison Square Gardens or the Cow Palace in San Francisco, and I would watch my father put his red boots on, and go out as this bigger-than-life persona wrestler, go out into the ring, and then come back. And oftentimes he WWE. Wrestled. Yeah, right. yeah. And before that, it was called something different. They had different sure. functions around the country. Um, but a hard-charging, competitive man, always wanted to win at everything that he did. Big guy. Big guy. Big guy, big character, uh, looked like Santa Claus, big, you know, blonde beard. But he was just a beautiful human being at the core of who he was. And so after he would wrestle, they would line his fans up the, uh, the hallway in the locker rooms there. And he would come back out sweaty and sometimes bloody back in those days. <clears throat> and he, I watched him turn into this incredible uh, human being, my father, and kind of shed the persona of Moondog Man with those red wrestling boots on and red tights. And he treated everybody he um, came in contact with with respect. So Red Shoes Living, to your question, it, that stuck with me my whole life. So as I went to school, then I came out of school, got into business, I realized... Well, he, died, he died. He passed away. Yeah. Yeah. He passed away in California in a car accident coming home from the wrestling matches one night. And uh, so, so after all that happened, um, I got his brother, my uncle, a mentor of mine. He was a turnaround guy, did mergers and acquisitions, and, and another uh, mentor who treated people with kindness and respect held them accountable at the highest level, wanted them to be the best version of themselves. But So those two examples um, helped me in business. And, and I said, you know, if we're going to grow companies, and I, I did mergers and acquisitions and ran a tech company for 10 years, I said, look, we want to win. In fact, we want to crush our competition, but we want to do it in a way uh, where we're not jerks. You know, we'll push people, we'll hold them accountable. And all of that came back really from watching my dad as well as my uncle with the red that, boots on. With the red boots on. And so what our concept was is, hey, let's stand out for the positive and how we work and how we live our life like a pair of red shoes, which actually is why I got into Spartan because red shoes living is what Spartan is all about. So we stand out. You know, you put yourself out there, you overcome obstacles. Um, and that's how I finally got connected with you, was uh, I believe that you, know, you spend half your life doing your job, or more. I know you probably spend more. You got 24 hours a day, you got eight hours, hopefully you're sleeping, 16 hours a time when you're alive. If you're unhappy at work, you're unhappy half your life. If you're unhappy in your personal life, it's the same thing. So what Red Shoes Living says is let's not be unhappy. Let's go live our best life. Let's you know, spend our time with the best people. Let's grow with each other and put ourselves out there in a way that, um, you know, we can thrive. 
And now we're, uh, we, you and I connected, and now we got this leadership thing going. Yeah, SpartanX leadership has been incredible. You know, two years ago we connected, and Colleen McManus has also um, been, you know, involved in putting that together. And what we found is that these events, the first event I ever came to, I was blown away by the human spirit. And even today, I raced at Fenway, and, and we raced with a, a lady, uh, Rebecca Gregory, that was a Boston bombing survivor. It was her first Spartan. She lost her leg in that. Um, she's a local hero. And we raced with her and watched her just absolutely crush it. And had, um, you know, she helped people, people helped her back to that human spirit. And that's all red shoes, by the way. That's what that stands out. So we had her speak at the Spartan X Leadership Series. Here. How, how'd she like the race? She right. loved it. Yeah. In fact, three quarters of the way through the race, she was tired. And she was flying out tonight, and I know she was talking about even maybe even having a wheelchair meter at the airport. She was, she was worn out. But as we were running, there were three other um, gentlemen that also had either you know, only one leg or they'd had something happen to them, and that, they kept inspiring her. They were just ahead of her. Three quarters of the way through, the water carry, um, she picked up the water jug, and I leaned into her and said, are you okay? And she almost just ignored me, and you could just see this look on her face like, I'm going to do this. I'm three quarters of the way through. And from that point on, she just, we followed her. We crushed it. You know, she oh, wow. crushed it with wow. us. Yeah. So Spartan X leadership, you know, we bring on Fridays at the stadium events and, and now uh, across the, the world, um, we bring leaders together. The objective is to share uh, best practices, thoughts, ideas. It's really, we focus on your book, The Spartan Way, and the principles that are in that book. And then we bring great leaders together and do, you know, 20 minute interviews and talks um, and they tell their story and share it with great leaders and executives and people of all kind on Friday before the race, Saturday and Sunday. And it's turned into a real big deal. Yeah. Well, the thing that drove me crazy uh, throughout life was seeing somebody really financially successful. Yeah. They nailed that part of their life, but then they let their health and wellness go. They lost their way. Yeah. And, um, and so to be able to talk to business folks and try to convince them that, hey, you got to have to fit them both in. Yeah. It can't just be so uh, financially driven. Yeah. It's yeah. exciting for me. Yeah, and it's the same thing for me. I, we talked last night about how when you're healthy and you're putting yourself out there, both you know, your mental state as, your, as well as your physical state, your performance goes up, and life just looks better. You know, yeah. Everything looks better, and the way you interact with people, I think, is better. It's just getting people to get to that point so they realize the art of the possible is something beyond sitting on the couch, as you would say. You yeah. know? So, With that, why don't we take a break and drink some of our Spartan tea right from Sparta. Sounds great. Sparta, Greece. You don't even know how far this tea traveled for you. <laughs> <laughs> I have All a feeling right. this is going to do, do me some good. You may just go right into burpees. <laughs> I did. I did right <laughs> off the bat. <laughs> We're going to go right back to this great interview. But first, today's sponsor is DNAFit.com. So we each got sent this kit for dnafit.com. I was traveling, so I didn't get to take advantage of it. And I didn't know what I was missing out on. Um, I got talking to you guys today about the detail it went into. Seth, I heard you talking to the lady on the phone, actually. Um, so I want to find out what you guys found out. Yeah, I, I'll tell you. I, I was uh, kind of excited about this, but it was, uh, it was really amazing what you get back. It's a, it's a DNA test. So you get a DNA swab. You put the uh, Q-tip in your mouth. You do the swab. You put it in the test tube. Send it off, and within a week, 10 days or so, you get your results back. I mean, detailed results in a number of categories, but very practical results as well, right? I mean, it breaks down how your sleep, your diet, your exercise, your overall wellness, what you're kind of prone to genetically, what are those foods you should be eating, what are those foods you should be avoiding, you know, what is your workout type? For me, it said power versus endurance. Um, I would have, so, I would have guessed that. That's I, actually I, one that I would have. Guessed. Well, I, I would have guessed it as well. But I'm so ultra maybe, I, so maybe I'd in my sixties. Uh, but I would have liked to have known that maybe in my twenties, and I could have focused. But I mean, so for me, uh, I, it, it was wonderful. I really enjoyed the product. This is the thing I was sorry I didn't want to interrupt, but the thing I was most impressed by is when I think DNA, I think where are my ancestors from? Which is fun to know, but it doesn't really change anything for me. Right. But to find out that it told you about, you know, the best time to sleep, the best foods to eat, the foods to avoid, that, that, that's what blew me away listening to you on the phone this morning. Yeah, so um, I was a little bit hesitant and nervous at first just for sending DNA away, but I'm really glad that I did it because um, what comes with it is uh, a 30-minute consultation. So what you get 
is a, one of many deliverables that you get is this awesome infographic. Basically, it tells you what if you have carbohydrate sensitivity, saturated fat sensitivity, lactose intolerance, um, celiac dispositions, alcohol sensitivity, caffeine sensitivity, salt sensitivity, antioxidant need, omega need. And for me, like... I have a general understanding of where my diet is and just from tuning into my body and seeing how I react, understanding that, but now from like a visceral kind of more scientific level because maybe your modern day doctors are never really going to dive into this. And uh, quite honestly, she made me aware of a lot of things that I might have a predisposition to. So it's good for me to know this now because I can direct my diet and my choices even more, like, you know, just steering now, that. But it's interesting, though. You said she talked you through it. Who is she, and, and what do they do there? Oh, right. So um, a very lovely woman named Amy. So after you get your results back, they provide a consultation. And it is quite heady results. I mean, they're talking about your AC, double T, CC indicators. So it's it tells you a lot of information. But so, you know, you need to, like, go through it and read it and digest it and then write down your questions because the service that they're able to provide is – super enlightening and for anyone trying to get fit i mean this is a great baseline to have just to be able to work off of um yeah i'm i'm, yeah. I'm pretty excited it's funny yeah. I, i'm actually going to go and do this now yeah, i think you should i think yeah. you'd enjoy it well and, and the other thing is you know we all have a general idea about health and what we're supposed to do but the idea that there is not a one-size-fits-all solution and you find out within the range of general health what the most important things are for you so we're fortunate with spartan up podcast that we get to bring you a special offer it's dnafit.com slash spartan that takes you to a landing page where you're already applied a 20% discount code off this product. So um, I'm stoked. I can't wait to find out my answers. Highly answers. recommend it. You should find Swab out Swab away, yours. Spartan. <laughs> Swab away, you pirate. <laughs> Arr. Arru! <laughs> Arru! That tea is unbelievable, right? It's very good, yes. I mean, it pushes you right through burpees. It pushes you through anything. It does. And you brought this all the way from Greece. All the way from Sparta. Um, horseback, mules, camels, swam. Mm -hmm. Just to get it here for you. I believe all of that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you consult with companies right yeah, now? Yeah, yeah. So I, uh, two years ago, I, I ran a technology company for ten years, and um, after doing that, this this red shoes living philosophy, we put at the center of that company, and then we created a framework around it, and we were winning big contracts, you know, with major brands, and they kept telling us, "You guys are different. There's something about you that stands out." and and that was this red shoes thing. So I finally decided after a number of companies said, listen, if you ever do this full time, we'd like to bring you in and have you work with our executive team and CEOs. And so I finally did that two years ago and we've hit the ground running. So now I work with executive teams and from the CEO down, the CEO has to be in every scheduled meeting that we have within this framework. And we've held true to that. You know, We've had companies say, well, that's impossible. They're too busy, they're traveling. We said, well, if, we're, if you're serious about wanting a company and a culture of standing out and creating experiences that stand out, the CEO it has to start with him. And so we do that full time now. And I get the chance to do keynote speeches on the topic, which is fun. But the, the real great part of that is, is working with these teams and seeing people recognize that if they turn the negative noise down of the world, you know, maybe even turn the KPI noise down and the revenue you know, noise, even though we've got to hit all those targets, and recognize that at the center of every accomplishment we do are amazing people and focus on that, that we can accomplish everything. So that's what I do, and I'm seeing tremendous change in the world. You know, with all the, some of the negativity we see out there, whether it's politi politics or in Hollywood or, you know, leaders making poor choices that go against integrity, um, the things that are important to us, there are leaders now that are doing the opposite, and they're slowing things down, and they're saying, no, let's, let's pay attention to diversity. Let's pay attention to the people that are standing right in front of us, or whether it's our customers or our associates. So our whole thing is, how do we keep people engaged? Um, there's statistics out there that say 70% on average of U.S. companies, employees, are disengaged. You know, And if, it, if that's true, then how do we get them you know, at Spartan? How do, we, how do we create that type of a culture environment inside of their job where they're spending half their life so they're more engaged than the competitor? That's what we do. I'd like to um, make a left turn here for a second. I, that video, that's really good what he just said, and so we might have to cut some of that video and use it actually for the leadership talks. Okay. Because um, 
because we're out there trying to recruit companies to come and see that there is yeah. a, a holistic approach. Yeah. Right. It's right. not just the KPIs, like you said, and the yeah. revenue and. Yeah, it's more. Uh, it's more, and I. Um, it's hard, by the way, because I have to thread that needle really thin. I, the, the hardest part of my job is, oh my God, we got a budget. Yeah. Like the first fifteen years, reason when we lost money, it didn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. We just lose money. That's right. a really good strategy. Yeah. It's easier. But the way the way you do things too, and I've watched you do this, even the conversation quickly we had on budget in general, is you find a red shoes way of saying it. You know, yeah. and what happens is pressure from the boardroom to the investors gets so high that what happens in a boardroom gets translated out to the rest of the company. And it's like, um, how do I want to say this? I mean, there's, it, there's a maturity or an understanding that's not the same as what's in the boardroom. So it scares the hell out of people when you go back out and say, hey, you know, this is the way we're going to do it. You better do it now. Or we're gonna, you know, yeah. That's not how you do it. You, you come in and say, look, here's the challenge. And I need everybody's input on this. And we value you no matter where you are in the company. And we also value you. What do you two think we should be doing to help achieve that goal? Very collaborative. That's I wish I was always that way. I mean, Marion sitting behind the camera is like, <laughs> I need budget to do editing. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the thing that's great about that is you want leaders, and I know you surround yourself with people like this, that challenge you, right? Yeah, and that yeah. say, no, give me more budget, because what yeah. I'm doing is pretty awesome. You know, yeah. we got the podcast, we're doing all this stuff. It's when people get quiet and everybody stops asking, that's when you got a problem. Sure. Yeah. So. All right, so keep driving me crazy, Marion. Good job. <laughs> With that, let's, let's give people listening uh, three tips, whether they're business leaders or somebody sitting at home uh, taking yeah. care of the kids. Three things uh, that will help enhance their life and, so, and those around them. Yeah, I think it, for me it always comes back to awareness. Um, and you, you know, we talk about self-awareness um, in the Spartan uh, way, and I think it comes back to that. You have to be aware of uh, literally everything. When the sun is shining or the rain is falling and there's good people in front of you and you want to put your phone down and pay attention to people. So I would say self-awareness is probably the most important, important part. The second for me would be surrounding yourself with people that I call it the model of sustainability. I will be better if I'm able to spend time with you and Marion and other people that are in this room because they're going to hold me accountable to what they know is important to me. So if I start to fall off the rails, they're going to pull me back and say, well, hold on, that's not what's important to you, you know? I mean, if you, if you ate cheeseburgers every day, I'm pretty sure everybody in this room would say, okay, something's wrong with Joe. There's something yeah, there. Sure, sure. And the third thing is, and this is really the best part for me, Red Shoes Living, this goes back to everybody that ran this race today, that is you have to put yourself out there. If, if you're not putting yourself out there, you're not living. And whatever that means for you, so be it. But you either need to come to this race or you need to do, you know, learn a new skill or uh, get promoted or, you know, whatever it is you want to do, you have to keep putting yourself out there. I think you die over time. Get uncomfortable. Get uncomfortable. And get yeah. comfortable being uncomfortable. Right. right. Life gets better. You're Thanks. awesome. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate and it. Life is better with the T. I like the guy. I like them so much we hired them at Spartanx. You know, we do these leadership forums where at stadiums we will get together two to three hundred leaders stadium. stadium, two to three hundred leaders from companies come out and we basically lay out the Spartan principles uh, with Lonnie's help. So um, I think I think he's aces. I don't know what you guys think. <laughs> well, I think it's a good mesh between the two of you, right? I mean, he's his leadership style is positive, positivity. Treat people with respect. I shouldn't make it sound like that's a good match, like like that's a yin and yang. You, you do as well. What I'm saying is that that's a perfect fit. He believes in and just kind of living that lifestyle, as he says. The red shoe living is that he got from his father, taking that extra measure and shaking someone's hand and smiling and giving them positive energy. And that's the way you you approach life. It makes all the difference in the world. Like honestly, my my dad and I always talk about this because it's like it, it's the ethos and the way that we try to walk in the world. Honestly, because I truly care about and love people and think you can learn things from everybody but it makes such a difference when you walk into any new situation with a smile on your face and a pair of red shoes and a pair of red <laughs> shoes i got my red shoes on tonight i got red shoes on <laughs> yeah, today. Joe, I, Joe, i'm wearing red shoes today what, tim's got it, his red book the wizard of oz when like the red shoes I'm just, well listen, do you remember when he spoke at the first time at the uh, la when we were out in the la stadium and and he spoke and he had this story about um, and he talks about it. I don't know if it's in his new book that that he's got out as well, uh, but he but he talks about it that the type of people in the world. And he uses he uses when you're on a plane, 
And so here comes the the woman down the aisle with the big bag, and you're either the person that kind of looks away because you don't want to have to get out of your seat to help her, or you're the person that jumps up to go help her. You know, those are the two kinds of people. And so I spoke like right after him, and I said, and I I heard what he said, and I said, well, there is a third type. I said there was me, who uh, I was on a flight for about 20 hours coming from Asia, and this woman asked me if I could help with her bag. And I said, absolutely not. The fact that you can't pick it up means it's not a carry-on. Go check it. <laughs> so now, for now those he, of you out there, don't he, take he, it. He it's uses all about me standards. Now. He it's uses all about my standards. story now to say, <laughs> there's, also, okay, a third there's time. also this jerk out there who does. But I will say, I'd been traveling a long time, and I was tired of picking up other people's bags. <laughs> Still on a, on he just he reverted. He reverted yeah, back. I did. But the thing is, is like there's a reciprocity of kindness, and when you give it, it comes back. And that's not in a selfish way, but that's like how you facilitate positive concentric rings that go out in the universe forever. Like your positivity and your impact on one person, throw that pebble in the pond, boo, doo, 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 it goes out forever. You're so a does jerk. Ne- so does you're negativity. You're a jerk, and that goes out forever yeah, too. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, and you want to know about how do you want to walk in the world, and how do you want the world to walk around you? I thought. I was brave to bring up a I story think you're where brave. I was a bad guy. Okay, yeah, we we all know that. <laughs> no, you're the nicest. That, but there's also a difference between like being a realist. How many times, Joe? How, how many times has being mean to someone gotten you anywhere? It doesn't. Well, although I will say, Frank, you've been in the military. You had to be mean a few times out there, and it was a. Well, Frank, so, that, 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 that's a great point. You know, there's positive <laughs> reinforcement, <laughs> and there's the way you positively reinforce. And sometimes you got to bring a little negativity <laughs> to make it positive. Make it positive. But, well, Annie, what a great American, huh? He's a great you know? American. He's yeah. done a lot in his life, and he's yeah. given back and making sure people can learn from him. Inspiring and, leaders. Well, what and we're it? focused on positive energy and positive leadership here. It's right. good. And, and like you, he believes in surrounding himself mm-hmm. right, with people who are going to hold him accountable. That's one of his his traits as well, right? So he wants to hold. He wants people around him, right? Yeah. yeah. And if you're out there, we want to know what you think about this. What tactics do you use to make the world a better place? We know what Frank uses. Um, a board. Yeah, what are you putting on your red shoes? <laughs> and what do they do on the airplane when they see a woman who can't lift their bag? Right. That's what we want to know. I put my foot out to trip them. <laughs> no, you don't. Oh, no, <laughs> okay. of I don't. So if you can... That? You know, you get to a point in your life where you're always looking for mentorship. Who's going to mentor me? You got to get to a point in your life where, well, I'm still looking for mentorship, but now it's time for me to mentor. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. And that's what we're doing mentor. here. We are and mentoring. That's the goal. That's the goal. Become a subscriber. Get 500,000 of your friends to subscribe. Answer the question. And we'll see the positive vibes. We'll see you next time. You know, you were talking about the concentric circles of positive yeah, energy. Yeah. I remember this freaking airstrike we called it. <laughs> <laughs> this episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by HealthFit. Unlock your potential with a simple DNA swab and discover a whole world of personalized diet and fitness insights. Go to dnafit.com slash Spartan right now and receive a 20% discount. Find us on Instagram at Spartan Up Podcast. You can DM us or tag us in an Instagram story. And remember, we're here for you. We're your partner in resilience for mind and body. We've got experts almost every day of the week to help you stay on track. And every Tuesday, come back for our interviews. See you next time.